both in a couple different ways, but I believe tonight's question, what do the scriptures tell us about bitterness and unforgiveness? I didn't, I didn't stretch that out, did I, Anthony? Sorry. I set you up. What do the scriptures tell us about bitterness and unforgiveness? Somebody, let's go right off the bat to somebody else do the talking. What do you think about, what comes to your mind when you hear the word bitterness? Come on. Anything? Nobody? Man, I tell you. Bad attitude? Bad attitude? Yeah, uh, that's a lot of truth there. Somebody else. What comes to your mind when you hear the word bitterness? Anything? Unfair. Unfair. A lot, a lot in that. Yeah, we're going to look at that scripture again, so. It was in there this week. What about unforgiveness? Anybody? What comes to your mind? What do you think about when you hear that word? But you don't know what they've done. I'm going to write that one down. I might have to use that again. All right, so I've got to let you all off the hook, right? I know nobody here has bitterness or unforgiveness, so you need to talk or answer tonight using somebody else's example, right? So that that way, that way we can just get past all of that, all right? Bitterness, unforgiveness, and I, I think about both of these things because how many, how many people know somebody that, that, that shows or has bitterness or unforgiveness, maybe in your daily life. How many people are around somebody like that? Anybody? Miss Joy, right? Yeah. A few of us, all right. So as we think about that, what, uh, wh what usually do they display? Whether either it's in their bitterness or unforgiveness, what type of personality or what type of traits or what type of actions do you usually see from these people? Get even. Get even. Yeah, up at one, yeah. Somebody else? Anybody else? Man, y'all going to make me do a lot of talking tonight. Yeah. <laughs> and there's there's so much truth in that right there was a couple of those things betrayal right where we feel like we've either been wronged or we've been hurt um and, and then and then we choose to hang on to that and and i do i i look at that that unforgiveness or that bitterness and how that they they both unchecked or not resolved how that they will grow so quickly Right, how how much just a little bit of bitterness that will will just branch out and explode into full blown anger, right? Fits of rage, uh, losing your cool or temper, right? Doing things, saying things that you wouldn't normally do, and then to the point of harboring or holding that unforgiveness. Man, it will it will stem so far, it's so quickly, and I, you know I have plenty examples of both of these uh, uh, in my life over the years of how that just situations have just grown into something that was completely crazy. And I could talk about whether it's problems with my family and things that have happened, uh, things that were said, things that were left unchecked. Um, things that didn't even really have anything to do with me, right? Whether it been through uh, things that happened to my to my dad or to someone else. I mean, think about how many things that we allow to fit into this category, especially for bitterness to 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 grow and grow and grow till we really don't even sometimes understand why we're even angry or mad or why that we're even holding on to something, but yet we can't let it go. 
We can, we can't let it go. We can't get rid of it. And we know that the Bible is very clear, very plain about bitterness and unforgiveness. Are these two things that we want inside of our lives? No, right? We know very, very quickly. So I am definitely glad that somebody put the question out there because maybe they need to see what the Lord's gonna gonna tell us to do, right? So I really want to steal some ideas of one commentary that I that I was looking at uh, early in the week, um, and then just try to try to talk about both of these um, individually, and then I think we can. Anthony's flying through. Back on up there, Anthony, just a little bit, right? Good job. Bitterness, right? Anger and disappointment at being tr un uh, treated unfairly. Resentment, right? Uh, I think that we see bitterness more and more and more because how many people feel like they're being treated unfairly? Is that not all that our society is talking about? Right, it's treatment, or, and whether it's justified uh, in the way that they see it or not, we're seeing an entire culture, group of people, right, an entire uh, nation, if you will, that talks about how unfairly they're treated. And you can pick whatever color, you can pick whatever race, you can pick whatever denomination, you can pick whatever party, you can pick whatever you want to right now, and someone is saying they're being treated unfairly which always breeds this bitter, uh, bitterness, right? And which turns into resentment. Having hard, truly hard feelings, right? Just, just think about over your lifetime of how that you've had hard feelings to somebody that really didn't do anything to you, but you knew what they did to somebody else. Come on, I'm going to be the only one, right? I mean, does, does anybody, can, and you don't have to raise your hand, right? You don't have to tell what the situation was, right? But just, just think back. I mean, I, I can think back in times of, of my ignorant days, right? And those are not too far gone. But I can think back at times where, where I would be so upset at someone because of something that they did to one of my friends. Right? You're not my friend anymore because... And how that we let that grow and grow and grow and grow. We see this thing gets really, really out of kilter. Yeah. Because you feel like you're being treated unfairly, rather be because of the referees, and it can ruin your entire game. You know, something that you love, yeah. you, you prepared for all week long, you, and because of yeah. one situation. That, that bitterness ruins your entire atmosphere and your entire game because you felt like, but that's just not fair. That's not fair. You know, regardless if it was intentional or not, right. it's, it's a feeling that you feel. Yeah. And you've let consume you, which has ruined every aspect of you getting any credit or enjoying that at all. You know, and it's, it's so funny most of the time because it seems like what we're preparing for for the following week coming up on Sunday night, it's like the Lord will place somebody in my path during the week for this very topic which which unfolded this week as I was maneuvering out through the floor and a guy came up and he just said man I'm really struggling with with forgiving so and so uh, because this is what happened and it happened this many years ago and all this conversation and it's just like you know, only this can be just orchestrated by God, first of all, right? But it's amazing uh, of how God always <laughs> puts that in my path throughout the week. But, I, you know, I, and I can, I can use tons of examples in my own life in ways that I harbored unforgiveness and then how the Lord just squashed that immediately, just even if even I didn't want him to. Right. Even in my even in my hardness of my heart, in the times that I wanted to hold on to that bitterness and that unforgiveness, Man, the Lord just took it away. He didn't give me a choice, right? He just squashed it, and I didn't have any choice but to just accept it. And it's an amazing thing. So let's look here really, really quickly at a, at a few things tonight when we think about bitterness, right? I believe the Bible tells us very plainly, very clearly, and I think that we can use these, these aspects right here. I believe that we can use them for bitterness and unforgiveness, but we're, we're going to look at them just firstly for, uh, for bitterness, right? Uh, first thing, right? Yeah, right? We don't deserve any better. 
I know this is a hard concept uh, for us sometimes to grab, uh, but I love, I love this thought process is, is that if we start depending upon things in the way that we see it or the way that we want it, and we can do it without God, man, we're going to fail miserably. Right? We have to depend totally upon God, right? We cannot overcome bitterness. We cannot, we cannot manage it. We cannot make it any better, right? Sure, we can make the decision in and of our minds to say, I'm going to work on it. I'm going to try to do better. But without God, there is no way that we can do anything, right? There's no way that we can make things right. There's no way that we can try. And, and really, there's no way that it's going to be any better without him. There has to be God in our life in order for bitterness to get better. Right, and I, I think that that's the thing that, that we need not only apply to this situation, but to every aspect of our lives is that there are times in our lives that we have been treated unfairly, that things have happened to us that, that shouldn't have happened to us, right? That means that there are things that will happen to us that are not going to sit well with us. There are going to be things that are going to be said about us. There are going to be things that are going to unfold over and over and over. And guess what? In the grand scheme of things, we really don't deserve any better. Uh-oh. Joey, you can't come in right off the bat and then ask a question. Uh, you me, come on, Tammy. Give me your question. Uh, Everybody welcome Joey tonight. Welcome for coming in. Hey, Joey. <laughs> That's it. Yep. Addicts get sober. Like some people are strong enough to do it on their own will. Yeah. But you find they're bitter. They're bitter people. Uh, if you don't do it without Christ's help. Great point. You know, I see that a lot. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Yeah. Well, and then and yeah, yeah. There's so much. There's so much truth to that. Yeah, I want to preach that, but I can't go there tonight, Joey. That is a good point. We're gonna come back to that though. I'm going to write it down on my note, right, so I can remember to talk about that. <laughs> and it's not just with those people, right? It's with, it's with so many things in our lives that if we can do it on our own, what's the need of our dependency for God? Why am I doing it in the first Right. God is not the driving force you're thinking, and here I've done all this, really nothing. What am I doing? You know, so you, I can see the anger and yeah. <laughs> you're hey, you're famous. It impresses me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> so right, if if we if we do look at this one standpoint knowing that every single one of us have all sinned, right? We've all fallen short of the glory of God, right? We know that there's nothing uh, that in and of ourselves, right? We're born with this sinful nature. Ephesians, what is that? Two, three, Anthony? Let's read that one. So what does that mean? Go ahead. Yes, our, our world is full of that. No, it's it is the world. Yeah, no, and, there, and, and it is. It's, 
I don't, yeah, you know, we blame, we blame a lot of that on this, this coming generation that's coming up, right? But there, there are just as many older people that, that feel that they have entitlement as well, right? We can, we can look at to, to, to long standing inside of your workplace, right? So whether you've been there X amount of years, right? But if you look at someone that's been there a long standing time, do we not think that we're entitled more because we've been with the company longer? But only God can reveal that to you. Right. Yeah. You know, and the work, the ones that work 16 hours and the one that work one hour. And they got the same amount because that's what they agreed to. You know, it's the same way with salvation. If you've been saved for 45 years or 45 seconds, you know, salvation, you know, I mean, it's still there for both of you. But, you know, your eyes have to be open and revealed that you aren't entitled to anything. And that's, that's something that if, if the Lord does not reveal and open your eyes to it, you don't you don't see it because you think yes it should. I heard I deserve three twenty three in Ephesians two three. Say that again because I can't hear you. You got Romans three twenty three. Yeah, let's go to Ephesians two. This is a great verse, right? Anybody want to read that? Great. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. They caught me off guard. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> Usually I got to beg, though. I just, I'm, I mean, I almost just passed out right there. Thank you. <laughs> That's from moving up. That's what's causing that. Good job. Go ahead. All right, right. So we, we're seeing once again, just like Romans three twenty three, right? We we know that we've all sinned. We all, we know we all have fallen short, right? But carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and we're by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind, right? We're all on this level playing field when it comes to to how that it starts, right? Now this doesn't mean that okay, every time something bad happens, happens in our lives, right? Whether it be man-made or something that comes out just about right. We can call it, what do we call it in the insurance world? I was hoping Karen was going to give me that. She just let me down right there. <laughs> what do we call it when, when, when something happens and they say it is a not close? Come on, Karen. Insurance term, help me out here. Don't leave me hanging. Your brain's done for the day. Good day. When something just happens, act of God. Good, Jason. I'm t you're two for two today. Joy, give him kudos. <laughs> act of God, right? You know, like hailstorm, right? Whenever something happens, and they say it's covered because it was an act of God. Has nobody ever heard that? I mean, you don't even read your insurance policy. You don't even have insurance. Come on, take it up tonight. Take it up. <laughs> Let me see. I mean, did I just make up that statement? Has anybody else heard of that? Yeah, praise the Lord. Everybody except for the Manningleys. Let's, let's, let's clarify that too. Bobby, Joe, and Amanda Manning. Let's clarify that. Yeah. <laughs> he said tire fell from the sky it had to be an act of God <laughs> <I gotta get laughs> all 
right? It, we we do, right? So many times, right? Something happens, and it doesn't mean that it's from God, right? Or that He caused it, or that that He made this terrible thing happen. But we really need to see that we don't deserve anything any better from God from the standpoint of what we were born with, right? The only thing that we deserve from God is eternal separation. Absolutely. We have no control over it. That's it. I, I agree. It won't. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I, Absolutely. I believe that 100%, right? Whether whether we agree with it or not, right, uh, of, of how true that that statement is. All right, so let's look at the let's look at the second one here. Anthony, we're going to work with you tonight. You've He needs an assistant. We <laughs> now, <laughs> number two, right? We've been forgiven much, right? So when we think about this concept of bitterness, right? How hard is it for us to hold on to this forgi- uh, this bitterness when we realize that God's not doing that very thing to us, right? That we've actually been forgiven of a lot, right? And this is a concept that I believe that when we come face to face, we come real with. It applies to unforgiveness just the same, right? It's an overwhelming thing, right? Let's look at that Ephesian text that Anthony was talking about earlier today. Anybody want to read Ephesians 4? Yeah, come on, one more verse. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ. Oh, my gracious. Go right back to that, Anthony, really quick, and then you can go back to Facebook. All right, right. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you. So we're, we're let off the bat, right, knowing that, guess what? We These are things that we pack around daily right it's kind of part of our dna makeup right it's kind of who that we are now do we choose to keep it right and activate it and allow it and harbor it and grow it right paul is telling right here hey put all this away put all this away by doing this very thing verse 32 anthony sorry All right, hold on, all right? Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. Go ahead, Roger. Does anybody want to jump on that? What's malice? What does malice have to do with? Come on, somebody's getting Google out. Intent, right? I'm sorry, Anthony. Yes. It is the intent, right? Yeah, ain't nothing wrong with that. So if you go to your deathbed and not Joey, you're going to really go there tonight. Be careful. Go ahead with the question. I mean, what do you feel like you're going to be? How's God going to judge you? Like, I can't forgive you because you didn't forgive. That's what the scripture says. We're going there, Joey. We're not on unforgive. We're not on unforgiveness yet, Joey. So legally, we can't answer that question yet. Part two coming up. Hold tight, Joe. I think it's a great question. I'm going to have you repeat that. You can. You can. I've got faith in you. 
I got faith in you, right? Being kind to one another. This is what we need to be putting right here on our, on our church sign. Hint, hint, right? Ephesians 4, 32. Be kind to one another. And then we can just put the rest of the sign, nothing but dots, right? Be kind to one another. And this is what should be filling our, 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 our world right now. It's what we should be showing, right? One way to get rid of this bitterness is to remember how much we've been forgiven. And how can we do that? Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. <laughs> Anybody want to read? Oh my gracious, right? Go back to verse 1 really quickly, Anthony. <laughs> He's he is struggling tonight. Come on, let's pray for Anthony right now. Come on. <laughs> oh, you, okay, go ahead. Show it up here. Come on, let's look at it. You must also forgive, right? Absolutely. Put on love, right? The Apostle Paul is always using that that imagery, right, of of wearing something, right, of some of it, of something being part of you, putting it on, which I think is extremely, extremely helpful, right? Holding this grudge is a way of saying Christ and what he's done is basically foolish, right? It basically doesn't mean what it should be when he didn't hold his grudge against me, really. All right, and this, this, this whole concept, if I do not extend it, man, I can't expect to receive it. And all the while, right, Christ has already done that, right? He's already forgiven. He's already forgave, right? He's already done all of these things with nothing in return. And yet we base on what we keep and what we extend on what someone else does. And that's the furthest thing from what Christ wants us to do. Man, I was at IGA today. Come on, let's give a shout out to IGA. I was there picking up a couple things. Um... And as, as I was in the line, there was a, a lady checking out, and I was listening to her conversation because it was not quiet. And, and she was talking about that she was buying a lot of groceries for her, uh, her senior parents, right, uh, that, that were staying in. I mean, she had, she had two huge carts, I mean, mounded up. And I was like, oh, my gracious. And as she was explaining, there was another senior citizen guy, right? I don't know what his age was, elderly man that was behind her. And he had like two little video things, right? You know, like two slices of ham and one piece of cheese that he had bought. And I see that all the time. It seems like every time I'm in there, especially elder people, they're buying just, you know, their one meal, right? Um, and anyway, he was in there and he was buying that. And she said, is that all you got? And of course he said, well, yeah. She said, I'm going to pay for that too. Well, this old man, he wasn't going to have it. I mean, he argued over paying for that. And finally, I said, just let her pay for it. I said, then you can just buy mine. <laughs> it didn't work, but he thought it was funny like you all did. And she paid for his stuff. Right? God is constantly wanting to just continue to share all these things with us, right? But we must be ready to extend. Let's go. Number three, because we're not going to get to unforgiveness. We want to get to Joey's question, right? Number three, right? We need to remember and not hold on to this bitterness that God is for us, right? And if God is for us, 
Praise the Lord, right? Who could be against this, right? This is a, a thought process that not only do we need to grab a hold of, right, but one that we need to just shower over ourselves, that God is working for us, right? And he's not against us. Even though we're going through all of these things, right? 2 Corinthians 4, 17. Praise the Lord, right? Somebody... For this light momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comprehension. Right? No, it's an all comparison. Different translation. Come on. Right? As we think about just this one aspect, right? Everything that we're going through is momentary. It's just in, in the realm of it, right? And I know it's very, very hard because we will begin to throw up those questions, but you don't know what they did, right? You don't know what they said. You don't know what they've done. You don't know how they've treated me. You don't know how many times they've wronged me. All of this is preparing us for something far greater, Right? Everything that we're going through now, every heartache, every pain, every serving, uh, uh, all of this that we're, we're dealing with, it is preparing us for a day, right, when God's going to have complete glory, right, that we're going to be able to, to stand back and look and say, man, that really didn't matter. Right? At the end of the day, at the end of the day, and I, and I know that's tough, especially when we're going through uh, our situation, right? Especially when, when things are happening, it's hard to be positive in the midst of that. Oh my God, whose kid is that giving me? <laughs> Remember that God is, let, he's, he ain't hurt nothing. Let him down, Danielle, let him go. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Just act like you didn't hear that, Anthony. I didn't take. <laughs> she was bad mouthing you. I'll address that later on off camera. <laughs> it wasn't, yeah. She's bad mouthing your son, not you. But man, how hard is it for us right in the midst of what we're going through to, to, to only look at this moment now and not looking at the future, right? Which engulfs all of that anger and all of that bitterness, all those things that, that we have going on to the point that we can't see that, hey, wait a minute, maybe God's working out something for the good that we cannot see. Man, I believe. You've got to believe and you've got to have that eternal perspective. You've got to constantly be reminded of that. Yeah. Yeah, and that and that is, and that's and it's so hard. It's so hard because if we do only look at that, then hey, uh, man, it just breeds that. It breeds that bitterness so much, so easy, so quickly, and we do not get a chance to step back and look and think. Hey, wait a minute, God's got to be up to something. Right, and, I, and I joke to the men's group, text group uh, throughout the week, uh, two days this week at the start of the week, uh, I'd loaded up a trailer load full of junk that we've been wanting to get hauled off uh, for for uh, two years now. It's, I, Joey, it's gone. So uh, day one, I get out of the driveway and uh, up the up the road just a little piece, and guess what happens? Tire blows completely out. Can't take you nowhere. Day two, get up to go to work early in the morning, get out on the driveway after I've changed the tire, right? Got a new tire on there, and guess what happens to the other tire? Blows out. Day three, I actually make it to Lebanon. I get over to get rid of all of my scrap. And guess what happens? The lady that runs the scales decides that she wants to take lunch early that day so they couldn't take my junk. And I could go on and on and on. Absolutely. I did not get to see that my whopping $57 worth of junk was coming, right? That's, come on, that's what they pay me. Come on, never mind. Y'all missed that. It's okay. Scrap metal's not very high right now. Come on. <laughs> Let's go, number four. Let's go, number four. 
right? No wrong will go unpunished, right? So as we look at this bitterness, right, we have to realize that God is in control, and this is really a sense of something that I, I don't know if we should look at it in this way sometimes, but it should be our sense of satisfaction instead of holding on to it, instead of thinking that we've got to avenge or we've got to make things right or that, you know, that the system is broken, that jail didn't work, that someone got away with it, that someone got off, that such and such didn't go the way that we want to. We need to realize that no wrong is going to go unpunished. It's even more than that. But I feel like, you know, if you're wrong on earth, I feel like it comes back. (laughs) And most times you're right. Most times you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Right to the point that to the point that if someone says something hurtful to us, how easy or how much do we want to say something hurtful back? Right? Or when when someone does something to us, right? How much more do we want to do it? Right? And God says what? Romans twelve nine. We just looked at this verse a couple weeks ago, right? Well, let's look at twelve nineteen and see if that's what I want him. Yeah, that's was what I wanted. Nineteen. I said nine. I'm a, I, Anthony. I'm allowed a mistake. That's my first one. Come on, <laughs> Anthony. You're not going to get paid tonight. You keep it up. <laughs> Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, "Vengeance is mine; I will repay," says the Lord. Right? And man, we want to, we do. And if we, if we think about that, man, the last thing that we really want to see is the Lord getting his vengeance and his wrath. Because if that were the case, we would all be getting hell. But instead, our wrath was poured out upon Christ, upon the cross. And therefore, we don't have to receive God's wrath. But God is still promising, even for those things that we we think don't get settled, those issues that don't get resolved, those crimes, those cases that that are forgotten about, that are cold, that never get solved. Man, we can rest assured. The day's coming, right? Great point. Great point. You hear stories like that of somebody killing your son or daughter and then they forgive you. Oh, it. God be very Oh, absolutely, right? And you, and you, I'm sorry? Oh, absolutely. That, uh, send him up here with me. Come here. Come on. Come up here with Uncle Kyle. Come here. Come up here. Come on. Gosh, get up here. Let's look right up here. Now look at all this crowd that you've got that's watching you. <laughs> Give them that mean look. Give them that mean look too. All right, let's go. Come on. Where was we at? What was we talking about here? Romans twelve nineteen. Anthony, that's where we was at, right? Vengeance is mine. <laughs> I will repay. And, and it is, that's an overwhelming thing because we, we do get so caught up in seeing that even especially, right, especially when we don't see uh, that justice or what we think is justice being served. Uh, and especially throughout all of the, the nonsense that's going on, uh, man, we, we've got to step back and realize that God is in complete control one day. And it's not even even so much because even in that statement, Right? All wrongs, not, not just those of lost people, right? Those that do these horrific things, we're going to be held accountable as well for everything that we say and do, right or wrong. We're going to be held for, uh, accountable for that. And I, and I tell you, it's, man, sometimes that one right there, that's an overwhelming, that's an overwhelming thought process in and of itself. 
So if we move and transition from forgiveness, right, or uh, bitterness to unforgiveness, right, I love just taking this and flipping it. Um, hopefully, I, hopefully I typed this right. Let's read because let's see if I said this right. We use unforgiveness as a weapon or power that we don't want to let go of. So just thinking about unforgiveness for a moment, just think about how sometimes we use that for this weapon or we use it as a power or a tool of, lev of leverage, right, to hold over someone else's head. Nobody in here does that, so let's, let's pick somebody else out that you work with then, right? Yeah, great point. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. One pastor friend of mine, he always said it was like drink, you drinking poison and expecting somebody else to die. It don't work, right? That unforgiveness, it just eats at you. It's like a cancer and it grows and it grows and it grows into the point that it does spill out. And we do see that bitterness and that anger and that rage and all those things. Did I put that definition on there, Anthony? See if, <clears throat> who are you talking to on Facebook? It's got your attention tonight. <laughs> I mean, your dad has two cheap shots that he's given tonight. He's not very nice. That's it. I know your weakness tonight, too. Come on, let's go. Give me, well, did I put that definition in there or not? I did not? Oh, my gracious. Unforgiveness. Somebody tell me what unforgiveness is. It's when you're Oh, my gracious. Say that one more time. Yep, one more time. That's good. Yeah. Oh, man. So just think about all of those, all of those descriptive words there, right, that were used to describe unforgiveness and think about how that those have played out in your life throughout some time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I have a, I have a current situation that I have an uncle I haven't talked to in years or three or four or five. I don't even know how long now. I don't speak to him at dinners and because I was, I was lied on, and it hurt my feelings that he believed it without coming to me. At right. Time. And ever since we've been talking about this, it's been eating me alive. <laughs> Yeah. You know, if it's something was to happen to me tonight, then I, I had to live with that. Yeah. Great, great point. 
And you do, you think about, you think about this unforgiveness and how that we do use it as this, as this power, if you will, to, to hold it over somebody's head, right? To, to use it in this negative way to where that you can exploit maybe their, their weakness or their fault or the way that they hurt or harmed you or, or whatever way that you want to. And, and we can almost play it just like that, like that trump card, right? We can almost just use it constantly to say, hey, I'm not going to forgive you because that way I can just keep bringing this up to use it against you. And man, we, we, we tend to grab onto it because that's maybe all that we have, we feel like. Right, and we we use it as this this power moment, right? Or or how about taking someone else's uh, actions or problems or or the thing that they've done to you, and then just making it to where that we feel so much more holier than they do, or they are, because they did it and we didn't. Right? Well, can you believe that so and so acted this way or so and so did this? I would never do that. Look at how much of a heathen they are. Look at how righteous I am, right? We begin to use, you're going to drop that. I got it right here. That's got lots of good slobber. You don't have COVID-19, do you? <laughs> Just kidding. Come on. I forget. Miss Norman, don't hate on me for talking about the kid like it. <laughs> how about as, <laughs> I know I got to quit. And then just thinking about it in our own ways to where that we, we begin to just look at them and, and look at them in a way to, to think that they do deserve something so wrong, right? I, I can look back in times of my life where people have wronged me and then something happened to them and I think, well, man, they're deserving everything they get because did you know what they did to me? <laughs> yeah, right? But is that the way that we should be looking at it? Absolutely. Right. And it does, you know, and then we then we begin to use it almost as this this weapon to where that uh, we can pull it out. Right. And we can burst out with this anger and we can bring it up and we can use it. And then we can really snap at that person or other people uh, just because of something that's come up or something that's happened. And then really the scariest part to where that we basically say, just like what Joey says, that we use this unforgiveness as to be God. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, we, we waste so much time of our, of our lives doing those very things. And, and man, it's scary. You know, it, it really is when you, when you think about just that we will let an action of someone else have so much control over our own lives. Right. And, and, and when we, when we look at in those terms, man, it really, it really should. Because we're, we're not the judge of somebody else, regardless if they've done something to us, we don't get to say so of what happens to them. Yeah. Say that again, Cameron. Say it loud and proud where I can hear it. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Get on this side here.
whatever it's morning. I want to keep my head against the wall for so long until I'm going to quit. But we do have a right to associate, and God, you know, God is playing about that. Yeah, and it's. You know, and that's the that's the that's the hardest part because, you know, even in of that, right, that we can distance ourselves, you know, and even to the point that we will choose to distance ourselves from situations. Um, and that's and that can and that can be really good, right? It can be tough and it can be a good thing, right? Because I believe that the Lord causes us to guard our hearts and ourselves from being in those situations, to putting ourselves in those situations. But man, sometimes we can we can take that thing too far and we can say, Hey, guess what? I, I just don't want to be around that person, so I'll just choose not to put myself in that position. Um, and, and forgiveness is such a powerful tool, right? When you when you think about that. Because if it's a people problem, God will put more of those type of people in your yeah. in your path, regardless if you disassociate with someone, somebody else that will do the exact same thing yeah. to you will be in your path to reveal something in yeah. your heart that's unforgiveness. If it's like control or if it's if you wanting to have control, patience, if it's whatever you're struggling yeah. with, God will work on you until we realize that hey, you know, maybe it's something different. Maybe it's just not a people thing. Yeah. Maybe it's a, it's a need. Great point. Um, I've just seen where that has come up, you know, and even in my life, in, in situations where you tend to keep seeing the same thing come up until you address the situation inside of yourself. <clears throat> How do you forgive? How do you tell somebody you forgive them for something you don't think is your problem? <laughs> <laughs> Let's say, say that question again, Joey. One more time. Say that question again. You're a heavy little turd. Heavy. Yeah, right. And, and yeah, and, that, and that's tough, right? Because there, the Lord puts you in places and positions and times where that you will, you will be the one going asking for forgiveness when you didn't do anything wrong, right? And that and that's a tough place, and only the Lord can do that. I believe that's only the Lord that that can do that. And 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 I and I don't have an easy answer for you, right? There's no cookie cutter mode where you can just say, okay, this is what I do, and this is how it plays out. Yeah. Yeah, and I think if you're just praying, hey, let the Lord lead you in that process, right? Just saying, hey, God, I. I, I don't I don't have all this figured out, but I know that I want to be right, and I know I want to be right with this person, and hey, and I believe that he'll show you exactly what to say and do. Wholeheartedly. Yeah. And then God will give you the opportunity to say the words to him. But yeah, you can take care of that inside of your heart yourself. Yeah, perfect. Pray for God to give you the opportunity to say to him, and if it needs to be said, God will say to him. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of times if I get that feeling, it's uh, from a misunderstanding, yep. miscommunication, uh, not understanding the person completely and totally of what direction they're coming from. Uh, you really got to, you know, go back and say, where did you get this right? This is exactly what you say. And then a lot of times they're like, oh, man, not hard. I didn't mean it that way. I mean it this way. Yeah. Sometimes you just actually take things. Yeah, absolutely. But I feel like bringing the situation back up it won't help things. Yeah, you don't have to. You don't have to go back through it all. I want to put it to bed and, and let it be. Yeah, and I think that you know, for a lot of people, they think that 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 closure is something that they have, so they have to hash all that back out or drum all those things back up. But not in every case, right? I believe that. Hey. Because evidently he may not even realize or know the way that you feel, right? Or what, what the issue is. <laughs> so, okay. I'm trying to give you the benefit of the doubt here, Joey. So. Yeah. Yeah. He may just look at you like you're weird and say, I don't know what you're talking about. That's the truth. And he don't believe it. And that's okay because your, your deal is not with him. It's with God. Yeah. And then God wiring it all out, right? You take the ball from your court, because right now, right, you're being so convicted of it, so once you make things right in your heart, whatever he does with it is totally up between him and God, right? And that's what he'll have to answer for, but you will answer for joy in your response. 
and hey, make that right and, and do it, you know, and I, and I, I assure you. It, it is tough. I can tell you numerous occasions in my own life where I've had to do that very thing and, and go and say, hey, I just needed to tell you, right, that I'm sorry for what I've said or what I've done and, and making things right. Uh, and it is hard, you know, and sometimes I didn't even want that, but God placed that in my heart to make things right. You know, I can, I can look at several instances uh, in my family to where that, you know, with, with my grandmother and things that happened there that I can look and see that, man, I didn't want to make things right with her, but it took her to be on her deathbed and I still didn't want to make things right, but I cared enough about my dad that I went just to see for him. And man, even as I walked into that room, the Lord changed my heart just instantly. And I wasn't even, I wasn't even, I mean, I was going to church with Kimberly because she made me, right? But I, I wasn't even, I had nothing, to, nothing to do with the Lord. But I'm telling you, he touched my heart to, to just forgive immediately. And she was paralyzed from a stroke, couldn't say a word. And I'm telling you, it was like her spirit spoke to my spirit and said, make things right. And then I look back and I said, what was I doing for six years not talking to my grandmother? What the heck was wrong with me? But at the end of the day, right, there's all kinds of things that we pack around, all kinds of things that we do that is so crazy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Let's look at those last couple of scriptures here. He's snoring too. Peter said to them, right, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, right? And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This is after Christ came, right? This is on um, uh, Pentecost. We know this is where lots of things changed, but this is the key, the core foundation of the gospel. In order for us to receive our free gift, not just the gift of the Holy Spirit, a gift of eternal salvation, uh, our, our gift of forgiveness. We have to do so taking on Christ. Man, there's something great to be said about this because this is the message, all right, that we need to be proclaiming that if we want things changed, we want all people to repent of their sins, right? Follow Christ in baptism and then being filled with the Holy Spirit. Next one, Anthony. This is the end of what? And forgive us our debts as also Whoa, Nelly. <laughs> Lord's Prayer, right? Very end, as Christ is teaching us to pray, words that we know, right, that we hear people speak and say all the time, not even church people know the Lord's Prayer. Right? I mean, we, we see this being uh, used all the time, and we also have and forgive our debtors, verse 13, and lead us not into temptation, right? But deliver us from evil, right? For if you forgive other their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. So we could take that. Hold on one second, Andy. I'm sorry. Right? So if we take and flip that script on that question, right? Or on that wording from Jesus, right? So if you don't forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will not forgive you. <laughs> Verse 15. Did I have 15, Anthony? <clears throat> but if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Man, there's so much in this forgiveness thing, and we have to make sure that we are doing our part. What's the number one reason why we choose not to forgive? Ego, stubbornness, control, pride. Anybody else? Bitterness. <laughs> Picture perfect of bitterness and unforgiveness is Jonah. 
Yeah. 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 I just think back and think of his story in his life. Man, he's just, and you know, just in desperate need of the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. He didn't have it, but he needed it in order to find that that release, that healing, because I, I don't know that he ever did. I don't know that he ever did. Forget. Yeah. Well, yeah. Have you ever turned loose the because it just drove us right. Out. Yeah. You know, no, you're exactly right. <clears throat> Last question. So if we know all these things that are keeping us from forgiving in the way that we should, what's the one thing that we could do in order to help us forgive that person or that situation? What's one thing that we could do to start that process in order to forgive? Prayer? Somebody else? I'm, I'm sorry. I remember all the wrong we've done. Yeah, great point. Yeah. Where you going? You going to mama? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah I love this ending with this commentary he says forgiveness is the only way to have hope and confidence restored it's the only way to protect your love and reinforce the unity that you have built forgiveness is the only way not to be kidnapped by the past it's the only way to give your relationship the blessings of a fresh start and new beginnings forgiving grace is a much much better way it's so wonderful to know that not only uh not only that you've been called to forgive, but you've also been given the grace with everything that you need to answer this call. Forgiveness, right? So what about that All right, let's go to it. I you were it. No, I'm not going to forget it. Which one did you? Which one are you referring to? You had two. That's okay. 
if you are harboring and something happens to you, and you're like, you're like, you know, what, if you're, if you, okay, you were saying, if you if you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. <laughs> so when you're at the pearly gates, you're waiting on judgment. That's, that's, What do you think would happen? I know he would handle it. That's a great question, Joey. I had that question in the Bible study, but it's like when you're when you're um, when you're reborn, like you ask when you're saved, you ask yeah. for forgiveness. And then you're re you know, he comes in, you know. But if you don't harbor unforgiveness, and you don't We got five people talking. Hold on a second, Joey. Bobby Joe's over here fussing. Let's get him get his up with. He's gonna be asking for forgiveness here in a minute. He done got loud over. Yep. All right, now let's go. Come on. We'll, we'll get to y'all next. We'll have counseling with them next. Let's go with you, Joey. I'm just curious of punishment. Absolutely. So, why was it, why would that be worth even just testing to see if what's gonna happen, right? Because scripture is very plain and clear, right? Brian's done, Brian's done told you two or three times, right? We've done pointed that out, right? If we're holding something, if we're harboring something, right? Then basically we're taking the forgiveness that we've been given and we're, 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 we're saying, hey, guess what? God, if someone else's forgiveness is not deserving, then how can mine be? Now, if you want to gamble and say, well, I'm truly born again, but yet... I'm harboring unforgiveness. You want to risk that? That's the question that we keep bringing up, right? Of, once again, are you truly? And, and that's hard, right? Because I, I know that's a tough question. Go ahead, Roger. I've got four of them shirts that says give and receive the gospel. Okay? We all want mercy. We all want grace. We all want forgiveness, okay? But if you don't give it, what makes you justify the thing that you're yeah. going to receive? Yeah, no, it's, you know, it's very tough. You know, I've had people actually ask me, so give what and receive what? Yeah. You know, what are you talking about on your shirt? And I have to explain it to them. Mm. You know, yeah. grace and mercy. That's what's going to get you in the head. But yeah. how do you deal with it? I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's got, of course, you've heard me preach on faith and obedient faith. You know, two, 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 two. Absolutely. Absolutely. Obedient faith is what we're addressing right here. It's very, and, it, and it's very tough, right? Because we, we want to look at that aspect and we, we, we know that, that there are some things that we that we harbor, right, and some things that we hold on to, which is all the more reasoning why that if we know, then we just need to address that and move on. I don't know if that's the answer you wanted me to tell you tonight. Well, yeah, because you'd be choosing your sin. Yeah. Over choosing. Absolutely. And and that and that's the hardest part, right? So. Yeah. 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 Then and and I think that's something totally different, right? Yeah. I think that's totally different, right? Yeah, you're 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 reasoning justification or and reckoning versus forgiveness, right? And the forgiveness, if you've already established that inside of your heart, then hey, then that side of it, right? Now it's just making things. <laughs> I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I, I'm pretty sure from our conversation tonight that yes, I would love to go with you though. I'll make it easy with you. I would. Miss Jean says this ought to be entertaining. Come on. I know we're about out of time here. Right? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, great point. And that's all that we're responsible for. That's what we're accountable for. We cannot do anything with what the other person does, whether they receive it, whether they accept it, whether they like it. You know, I mean, how many times have you said and, and say that you forgive somebody or you apologize to them and they come off and say, well, I'll never accept that. I've heard that. I, don't want to hear that. <laughs> I've heard that. <laughs> I might have heard that. Right, for the most part, right, people are in the same are in the same boat. Forgiveness is by far the much better way. The only way, right? And God's giving us everything, and it's something that we cannot do in and of ourselves, only through God, through His grace, His love, His mercy, and the Holy Spirit can we do those things. Can we get rid of bitterness and unforgiveness? Come on. Questions, comments, concerns. Where's some of them crybaby boys at so we can get them to do some drawing for tonight? <laughs> uh, uh-oh, who's going to draw? Lane, you want to pick one out? Just one. Just can you get one out of there? All right, dude, you are the best. Thank you. Yay! Come on. Yay! That's what I'm talking about. Give him a clap. Give him a clap. That's not for you. Man, we keep going on this subject right here. We may have to draw again. Let me read what we got here. Is war a sin? Did we cover that? We did, right? Okay, come on. Let's look again. Come here, Case. You want to draw this time? No. Go. Anybody who's up? You're going to have to sit down a truck or a trailer to pick one out here. Come here. Pick one out here, right here. Just one. You've already watered them up 10 times. There you go. That one right there. Whoa. Good job. Yay. <laughs> now get off them steps. <laughs> I got to read them first because I can't just read them on the fly. Cause, uh, all right. <laughs> this, ought to, this ought to be an easy one. All right, here we go. Why are human believers' bodies called the temple of God? That's what's on there. Let, let, me, let me say right here again, right? Why are human believers' bodies called the temple of God? To be continued. We might have a two-part next week. We might have a two-part. Questions, comments, concerns. Great question. All right. <laughs> we're just glad they're not our kids. Come on, let's just what we're. Everybody just claps. Yay, it's not my kids. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> All right, let's come on, let's go. I know I'm already at, I'm already past time. Let's stand and we're gonna we're gonna pray out of here. Come on. All right, Lord, we do just uh come to you just thanking you for our time tonight and just thanking you for uh just discussion and and just looking at it from your word lord we know that uh bitterness and unforgiveness of of how much those things um they they grow and they grow just completely out of control and this is not just aspects of the world lord uh we see these very things grow inside the church lord so i do pray i pray ultimately for every person uh, here tonight lord that uh any areas of bitterness or unforgiveness that we may have on the inside of ourselves lord that you would reveal it to us this week that you would you would just press it upon our hearts to to get rid of it um and and get rid of it through you lord we know in and of ourselves there's nothing that we can possibly do uh, but lord with you uh, we know that all these things are possible 
So, Lord, I, I pray that very thing, that you will help us to get rid of it. Lord, if that means going to someone, if that means calling someone or texting or writing or, or, or whatever it may be, Lord, that we, would, uh, that we would do everything that we can on our end of the deal, Lord, to make things right, Lord. So I just pray. I pray for our time tonight. I pray for our travels home, that you'll give us travel mercies. Uh, and I just can't thank you enough. I pray for all of these prayer requests. I pray for uh, the election uh, coming up. Uh, Tuesday, Lord, that um, whomever you put, Lord, whether it's another four years or you establish a new president, Lord, that we are going to trust your decision-making process, Lord, knowing that you are in complete control. And Lord, we're going to, to rally around and do what you've called us as believers in you. So I just pray, uh, lifting it all up to you in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>